Hi, my name's Emma and let's talk spooky stuff. I have a question for you. How high are your expectations when you go in to watch a straight to VOD horror movie? Especially one that has the theme and the storyline that has been done a dozen times before. Are you keen to just go along for the ride, hoping it's a popcorn film and you find comfort in that? Or are you expecting something new that will surprise you? New Scandinavian horror, The Twin, which drops on Shudder this Friday, somehow covers both of these. Note, first and foremost, Almost, the film is in English. It's about an American family that have moved to Finland, but it's shot in Estonia. Stay tuned. <laughs> the film stars Teresa Palmer, an Australian actress known for her horror work on Warm Bodies and Lights Out, Stephen Cree from horror films such as Marta Lanes and The Awakening. Also in the cast is child actor Tristan Ruggieri and Barbara Martin, who you may remember from that version of The Turning, The Turning of the Screw the one we try to forget about. The twin is about a family experiencing loss after a horrific car accident. They move to Finland to heal from the tragedy, but the mother, Rachel, struggles to move on. And when her son, Elliot, shows signs of distress, she starts to wonder if there is more to her loss. And then her nightmares come crashing into reality when a woman from the small traditional pagan village they have moved into tells her that there may be a connection between her loss and this town. So so if you're looking for the typical story of the creepy kid, the twin has a pinch of that. But unfortunately, in my opinion, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, this film bites off more than it can chew. And for all of its outlandish design and structure, it sways back into conclusions we've seen time and time again. At the end of the day, producing nothing new. And the film feels like it's split between two minds. I mean, Pick a metaphor for grief and go with it. It feels like this divide may be a way to confuse its viewers. The film is directed by Tonelli Mistolin and people who know their first horror feature are bound to be revisited by the same thoughts. Lake Bodum came out in 2016. This horror mystery thriller was inspired by real life murders in Finland. But the film, much like the twin, split audiences. The film had a change in direction that was either a make or break for viewers. Twisty story are kind of this director's thing who co-wrote the film with the same co-writer as Lake Bodum. They have been friends for over 10 years, but this is their first English language venture. This Nordic duo seem like a huge fan of twisty stories. But at what point do the exciting red herrings become more of a distraction that can seem deceitful or misleading? Besides the twisted story, the film directing wise and casting perhaps reminds me of James Wan, not this James Wan, this James one. <laughs> Although a simple story, the complicated path it takes allows the viewers to experience all aspects of horror, from the creepy, haunted-like house to the looming cult-like village. It's the fixation on dreams that gave me the wan vibes. But besides all of the confusing back and forth, the film, you know what I'm gonna say, landscapes. Cinematography wise, honestly, you cannot get a better setup than this. A beautiful winter landscape and the architecture is honestly breathtaking. The natural light, even if emulated, plays a big part both externally and internally in this film. It's a soft film with a beautiful natural glow bounced off the talent. But even in shots in dark rooms like this, they find a way to bring in the natural light. They really bring the outside inside. It's so pretty, making the silhouette the focus. And if I was to reach, I would say this is about the family looking for hope and even in the darkness, there's a glimmer. That's totally not what it is, but you could say that. The music and sound also complemented this. There were some beautiful haunted music transitions, but the film knew when to amplify the horror with stillness. But my favorite part about the film is actually the natural sounds and how that gained so much depth into the story. Lots of beautiful foley work of the creaking of the old house, blankets being pushed back in bed, yes, that has a sound, and the acoustics of the wood interior, as well as beautiful waterfall shots because, you know, it's all about bringing the nature inside. It really creates 
a feel like you're there and just an authentic natural vibe to the film. It doesn't feel too much or too Hollywood. But unfortunately this does not save the film. I've explained how the plot is somewhat convoluted attempting to dress up a tired old story with exciting window dressing. It feels split in half and in do so it overstrains the plot but we haven't even touched on scares. This is why I asked what your expectations were when you watch a straight to VOD streaming platform or DVD movie. Because the film does deliver scares and they are pretty good but they are jump scares and they're more directed to someone who is watching it for a fun and easy popcorn horror movie. The film has jump scares exactly where they should be, expected nightmares and obvious chilling props. I don't think that there's anything wrong with this by any means but it does feel a little bit old at this point, particularly the creepy kid drawing. Yep, they did that. <laughs> the Twin was a film that I felt hope for going in and not knowing a lot about the premise. I hoped it wasn't as obvious as I was assuming. Most horror fans will find this one deeply predictable, but when the interesting elements came in, I was surprised and ready for something fresh and new, but ultimately I was disappointed by the result. I don't go into these films looking to dislike them, but when they offer the opportunity of something more and then do not deliver, I find myself more disappointed than I would have been if it had just been a straightforward popcorn film and more self-aware at nailing that than trying to attempt something so much more. At the start of this film, I'm like, this is up there. This is a seven. This is getting really high. And by the end of the film, I feel like this one lands as a five for me. It's not a bad movie. It's not a great movie. It's a meh <laughs> movie. For me personally, this one hits Shudder on Friday. So I am really looking forward to hearing what you have to say. If you're a fan of the Scandinavian landscape like I am, it's still a treat to watch and definitely listen out for the sounds and the music. I thought they were superb in this, but you'll understand what I mean when you watch it. It's... It's the same old thing, really. Scare, I'm gonna give it a five because although predictable, I think that the jump scares were all right, uh, but it wasn't that feeling like I'm dreading and I'm scared at all. Once they're over, they're over. So it's kind of in the middle for me. Originality, I'm gonna give it a two, which yeah. kind of says it all. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video and this is helpful for you. Maybe manage your expectations and do please answer my question. Let me know what your expectations are when you go into these straight to video, straight to DVD, straight to streaming platform movies. I would love to know if you're going in expecting something big or if you're happy to just watch a easygoing horror movie that's simple but hopefully perfected and has interesting characters. Let me know all of your thoughts on this. I can't wait to hear down below. Um, and thank you so much for being here. If you'd like to subscribe, I do new videos every single week talking about horror movies and thrillers, giving you a lot to put on your to-watch list or crossing some off. Maybe you can watch that later if you're, you know, desperate or... You need something, you know? But I have some great, really helpful videos coming up. So if you'd like to subscribe, I'd love to have you here. And I'll talk to you all very soon. Stay safe and stay spooky. Bye, friends. Oh.